Glory 83s this weekend, now it's time to break down the entire card. Starting with the prelims, a welterweight contest between Jos van der Belsen taking on Robin Surik. I'm going to be basing it off of how both of these guys fared against Jay Overmeer as of recent. The thing is, von Belsen was absolutely obliterated by Overmeer. Meanwhile, Surik was able to take him to a somewhat close decision, though Overmeer definitely won that fight. I think Sarek is the better technical kickboxer and I'll have him taking a decision. On to a lightweight contest between Soren Kalnuik taking on Armin Hamborian. Kalnuik is a legit guy, he's a, of course a Coliseum lightweight world champion, undefeated, very young and only 26. He beat a former glory title challenger in Stoyan Kubolinski. An excellent addition to the Glory lightweight roster. Armin is going to have a lot of problems with Soren's combination work, output, and overall aggression. The fight that I saw Armin in last was the Golden Protrosian fight, and I don't think he looked very well there. He looked very stiff, and I think that he's going to have a problem with just the overall speed that Soren presents there. I'll have Soren taking this fight via a decision. Continuing in the lightweight division, there will be a fight between Chris Woon and Jonathan Maezo. Woon just fought recently in an absolute war against Tarazi. Woon picked up the victory there. Maezo is a young prospect at just 22 years old and is a Waco world champion. Maezo utilizes a lot of kicks and is a good counterer. Meanwhile, Woon is a boxing heavy style and uses a lot of pressure in his fights. I'm going to lean Woon here as long as he can keep it in boxing range and constantly use his pressure to push back Maezo. I don't think Maezo is going to be able to use a lot of his kicks and I think that Woon is eventually going to wear him out. Woon is also a lot more accurate and has a lot more high level experience. So I'll take Woon taking this one via a decision. Going into the featherweight division, there's Ahmed the Chekmuzi taking on Burjan Peloshi. Ahmed has a classic German style, lots of pressure. What makes him a little different is that he's a little bit more reluctant with his shot selection, making him a little bit more accurate. Puji is a little bit more technical, he's a little better on the back foot. He has some nice body shots and includes a little bit more variation in shot selection. I think that Ahmed is probably going to get the nod here just because of his offensive pressure and overall output. I think we could see Pepuji maybe outstriking Ahmed, but the overall pressure being too much for him. So I'll have Ahmed taking a decision. For the heavyweight division, Yuki will taking on Nabil. Yuki is a taller, longer Estonian fighter. He uses his reach a lot. Nabil is a shorter, stockier. Heavyweight uses a lot of looping power shots. Nabil will have about a 40 pound weight advantage here. Nabil has a lot more experience and a much better record. Overall, I think that Yuki is a little bit too tentative for my liking. I think that Hijab is a much more technically sound fighter. And I think that he'll probably get the win here. Interestingly enough, Yuki is actually the better knockout artist, but I think that Hijab will probably get this via a decision. In the welterweight division, Jolton Luderbach will be taking on Daikoli Kamurai. This is a very interesting contest between both because both of these guys are very accurate with their strikes. Luderbach was insanely accurate in his last fight when Glory he had a very dangerous light right left straight. Kamurai mixes up the weapons very well. He's also very evasive and he's a hard man to hit. This should be a very close competitive contest between these two. It might be the closest fight on the card, but I'll go with Luderbach just because I think he has more knockout power. I think that could be the breaking point in this fight. So I'll have Luderbach taking this fight via a third round knockout. For the lightweight division, Garrick Belay will be taking on Shirzana Kipa. This is a very interesting fight because I think these guys' styles contrast each other in a lot of ways. Belay is a heavy leg kicker. Well, Akipa is a very offensive boxer with a lot of body shots. Akipa does not do a very good job at checking leg kicks, so I think Belay is going to have a lot of success there. If I was him, I would make that a very crucial part of the game. Belay does have some good boxing as well, but I think he's probably going to get outboxed by Akipa for most of the fight. I think that Akiba's pressure could definitely be the equalizer here because Belay did not show great cardio in his last fight, and I think that Akiba is definitely going to push him back, and as long as he maintains a constant pressure, Belay should probably gas out in the later rounds. So I think that Akiba is probably going to do more damage in this fight, and I think that overall the cardio is going to be too much for Belay, so I'll have Akiba winning this fight via a pretty close decision. Moving from that, there is an intriguing middleweight clash between Serkin. Oskalin versus Sergei Pron. This fight is very interesting because Surkin is a southpaw. He's very explosive, a lot of power with him. 
Sergey Braun is a little bit more, a lot more technical in his boxing ability. Braun is definitely the better boxer here, though I do worry about the amount of shots that he absorbed in his last fight with Boapea, especially since Serkin is a much more powerful fighter and can definitely knock him out a lot more than Boapea could. If Braun is able to just keep it at a technical boxing level and avoid taking too many shots, I could definitely see him winning this fight and just out kickboxing Serkin. But Serkin's power is just abnormal. The way that he finds that shot is just always exceptional. So I'm going to give it for Serkin here just because I think he will find that shot eventually. I think he, that he's just so aggressive and so powerful that he will it'll get the win here. I think that he'll get a decision because he is a little bit more patient. He is, has found better ways to get the knockout with like the knees and more mixing it to the body. So I do think that he won't gas out either. But I think that Serkin will probably win this fight via a decision. In the co-main event, the current glory middleweight champion Donovan Visa will be defending his title against Cesar Almeida in a rematch. Starting off with the challenger, Almeida has a very good left hook. If he's able to find it, he has a lot of power in it. Man, Almeida's left hook is very dangerous. He knocked down Serkin twice in his last fight, and if he finds it in this fight, it could be very dangerous for Visa. But the problem here is that I think Visa is very technically sound. He's a very hard man to hit clean, especially as you saw in his last fight. He's a lot more timid now, I think, as he has developed as a fighter. So he isn't really as willing to go out and trade as much. He's more willing to just wait and see as the opportunity comes for it. So with that, it's going to be a lot harder for Almeida to land those power shots that he did against Serkin, where Serkin was basically just opening his chin up for them. I think that Almeida is going to have a hard time landing Visa clean. I think that you're probably just going to see Visa walk down Almeida, wait for the certain shots to come into play so he can safely land and get another pretty safe and somewhat dull decision victory like we saw in his last fight. I think that for Visa, you're going to need to have someone who either has like the power of a Alex Pajera, where it will be very dangerous for him, or someone that can technically outkickbox him which I don't think that Almeida can present with all due respect to him. I think that Risa probably wins this fight via a pretty dominant decision. Next up in another title rematch, we have the current light heavyweight champion Sergei Maslaboyev taking on Donkey Albeda. This fight will be very interesting as I think Albeda has developed a lot as a fighter in the past few years. In his output, and diversity in targets has definitely improved in recent memory. I think Sergei will still give him a lot of problems, however. Sergei definitely has the power advantage there. I think the first two rounds are going to be very dangerous for Albina. Later rounds in the fight are going to be very determinant in how it ends up. Uh, if Albina is able to keep up with a very constant pressure, I could actually see Sergei, I could actually see Albina winning this. However, it's just a question of if he can deal with Sergei's power over that time. Sergei is still a very good technical kickboxer and could give him a lot of problems everywhere. I'm going to lean Sergei here because I think his power might be a little bit too much to handle, but I could definitely see a situation where Albina might get this one. For the fight I'm most looking forward to on the card, I'm going to have to go with the middleweight contest between Serkin and Braun. Just because Serkin is always a very fun fighter to watch because of his aggression and knockout power. I would say look for Akipa. I think he might put on a very good performance against Belay and earn a title shot with this victory. With that, that's the card breakdown. Thank you for watching this video. This has been Shared TV Reductions. If you've enjoyed it, leave a like and consider subscribing. Make sure to leave your own comment. Make sure to leave a comment telling me what your predictions are for the fight. I'm out.